Here we are at the beginning of stage three. In stage three, we take the five reed blanks that we've selected and we sand them each on the 220 grit sandpaper to a thickness of 0.126 thousandths of an inch. Then we soak them in water for a few minutes, take them out, lay them on their backs, and let them dry overnight. Day number two, we sand the five reed blanks on 400 grit sandpaper in the same way that we do on the 220. We soak them for a few minutes, lay them on their backs, and let them dry overnight. Then on the third day, we sand one more time with 400 grit sandpaper, but first we polish the sides of the reeds to a specified width. Uh, we're not taking too much off, just a little bit. And then we final sand with the 400 grit, and then they're ready for profiling. We then profile the five reeds, and then we can clip them, and they're ready to play. So let's get started with the first sanding on the 220 grit sandpaper. If you remember at the end of stage two, the last step was to sand with 220 grit sandpaper, each blank to a thickness of 0.128. The reason that I leave that little bit is if there's any movement, if it becomes unflat in any way on the, on the bottom, this gives me a chance to correct that. So we start stage three sanding with the 220 grit sandpaper. If you look at my measurement, I'm measuring once again right behind the first cut and you'll see that this reed measures approximately 0.128 thousandths of an inch. So with that, we go to our 220 grit sandpaper and we do the same sanding pattern that we did before. So I start with circles coming this way as light as I can with the touch. And then I go circles in the other way and back and forth on the return trip. Turn the blank around and then do the same pattern in reverse. And this also uses the entirety of the sandpaper so we get even wear on the sandpaper. Now that we've done that, we can check our thickness. And you can see we've hit 0.126 thousandths of an inch. So now we move on to do the other four reads and I'll meet you when I'm done with that. Now that we've finished sanding each of the blanks to 0.126 thousandths of an inch, we're going to put them in water and let them soak for a few minutes. The reason that we put them in the water is so that it will raise the grain and then when it dries, if it moves at all, uh, goes out of flat, we have the opportunity on day two to reflatten. Now that the reeds have been soaking for a few minutes, we're ready to take them out and to lay them on their back. When I take them out, I don't want to dry them off. I want the water to stay on them. Just want to make sure that they got good and wet so that it raises the grain and if it's going to move at all during the drying we can reflatten again when we sand tomorrow. Here we are at day two. Our reeds have had a chance to dry overnight. We've switched out our sandpaper to 400 grit. Now we're ready to sand each of the five blanks in the same way that we did with the 220 grit sandpaper. Then we'll soak them for a few minutes, lay them on their backs and let them dry overnight. Before we do that, I wanna talk briefly about the importance of having the sandpaper glued down to the glass. If you can imagine a big ship or a boat moving through the water at the bow of the ship or boat, there's something called a bow wave that's created. The same phenomenon can occur if you were trying to take the sandpaper and hold it down onto the glass with just your fingers. So if you can imagine, as the reed, as I'm sanding, as the reed moves across the sandpaper and I'm trying to hold it down, there is that phenomenon of a bow wave that's created on the leading edge of the reed.
And what that does is it rounds over the bottom of the reed rather than keeping it perfectly flat. So if you're trying to hold down the sandpaper with your fingers, it's impossible to do. There inevitably will be a bow wave, even if it's imperceptible to your eye, there's a bow wave that's created at the leading edge of the reed blank. So having the sandpaper glued down to the reference surface is really the only way to keep the bottom of the reed perfectly flat. Okay, that was a lesson that I learned the hard way. Uh, when we're done sanding at 400 grit, I'll show you by putting two reeds back to back that when you do it this way and you have a perfectly flat reference surface and the sandpaper is glued down to that, you can barely tell where one reed ends and the next reed uh, begins. Uh, and when I say barely, you can't really tell uh, if, you, if you're just setting them there. And I'm not talking about putting pressure down to squeeze them together. I'm just talking about setting one um, back to back or bottom to bottom and you can't tell that there's a, a line there because they're so flat. And that really uh, emphasizes the importance of having that perfectly flat reference surface and then the sandpaper glued down to that perfectly flat reference surface. So we're gonna go ahead and get started sanding. Again, we take a light as touch as possible and we go in circles switch the direction at the halfway point on the return trip straight up and back flip the reed around circles reverse the circles and then straight up and back and again in this way we're using the entirety of the sandpaper so it wears evenly and now what we're left with is a polished surface and what we're doing is sealing the back of the reed or the bottom of the reed. We're sealing it. Once again, it's important with your dusting brush to clear the sandpaper before you start sanding with the next reed. Here we are in day three. Our reeds have had a chance once again to dry overnight and now we're ready for our final sanding on 400 grit. Before we final sand on the bottom or the flat side, we're going to polish the edges. To do that, I use my 400 grit sandpaper and I have a little block of wood at 90 degrees that helps me keep the reed 90 degrees to the sandpaper. So I will measure as precisely as I can on the butt end of the reed right there. And you can see that we're at approximately 0 0.46061. And I'm trying to get that down to 0.455 thousandths of an inch. So I always start holding the reed. When you go in your back and forth motion, you want to make sure that you're not doing um, a bowed motion, you want to try to keep it as straight forward and back as possible. I do five on one side and five on the other side. And then I check my measurement. So we're still pretty far away. I always like to take it slow. Five more. Check my measurement. Making slow progress on this one. there. Say about five more swipes. Five. 
hit our mark, 0.455 thousandths of an inch. Now that we've polished all of the sides of our reeds, we're ready to do a final sanding on 400 grit sandpaper. We want to measure this time. Here this one you can see is just below 0.125. We are aiming for 0.123 thousandths of an inch. So I'll do my sanding pattern and then check where we're at. can see we hit our mark at 0.123 thousandths of an inch. Before we move on to profiling, I wanted to talk briefly about why I shoot for a finished thickness on my blanks of 0.123 thousandths of an inch. Here we have a quarter round. If you can imagine it being a full tube, this would be the inside of the tube and this would be the outside. So when we split it into quarter rounds, we're now looking at the inside of the cane and the bark side of the cane. The inside has a consistency of what I would describe as soft and mushy. And as you move closer to the bark side, the consistency gets harder and more brittle. So now if you imagine we flatten this blank, what we're doing is taking all of that material and moving it closer to the bark side here is a finished blank. Here's the flat side, and that's our finished thickness right there. So this bottom side of the reed, or the flat side, or what would be the inside of that tube, is now going to determine the consistency of the tip of the reed. This is the bark side, and when we profile, we take sloping cuts toward the tip of the reed, and so the tip of the reed ends up being the material that's on the flat side because that's what we're aiming for when we're profiling. We're taking all of this material from the top off and we end up with the tip of the reed being four one thousandths of an inch or so away from the flat back side of the reed which was the inside of the tube. So the, det the thickness of the blank determines the consistency of the tip. If you take a reed blank and you say I'm going to make it really thick and we get up to say 0 0.130 what you've done is you've moved this further away from the bark and that changes the consistency of the tip to something that's more soft and mushy. If you take the blank and you make it thinner you're moving this flat part closer to the bark which would then make the tip harder and more brittle. So what I have found for my reeds is the thickness of 0.123 gets me where I want my reed tip to be in consistency. It's not too soft and mushy. It's not too hard and brittle. It's, it's ideally right where I want it. Before we start profiling, I wanted to talk a little bit about the setup that I use. This is the Uhl RPM 68 reed profiler. I have it outfitted with a number 301 reed guide. This is the same profile as a Van Dorn V12. You can see I have a little shim of wood wedged in between the guide and the reed holder and that ensures that I put the reed in the same spot every time. I have three pieces of tape. Each piece of tape is approximately four one thousandths of an inch, so we're kicking the reed forward twelve thousandths of an inch, which gives us a precise location for the tip of the reed after we clip it for the first time. So as I begin to profile, you'll see that I do it in three stages. There's a rough stage, um, and then sort of a medium stage, and then the fine stage is, is the, the last one.
So let's go ahead and rough it out. We start on one side and we rotate to the other side. And we rotate back. And you keep that up until the cutter doesn't cut anymore. So you can see I'm moving rather fast in the rough stage. And once I feel the blade stop catching, I can take a minute and clear away the shavings. And now I move on to the medium where I slow down. I go from one side to the other. And now for the final stage, I start in the middle and I'm moving extra slow, paying close attention to the tip trying to make sure that I get all of that material. And then I move slowly to one side. This reed profiler is accurate within one one thousandth of an inch. And I have found that to be true. As I'm moving slowly through this stage, it's important to note I'm not pressing down, I'm just moving forward. And then when I get to the center or level again, I pay, pay close attention to make sure I'm getting all of the material off of that tip. And then I move to the other side very slowly. And you can see each time I clear the mouth of the cutter, I'm getting more material. Every little bit counts. So now as I approach the center for the final time or level, I'm going to focus on the tip and make sure that I don't feel any grabbing. Again, I'm not pushing down. I'm just making sure that the blade is not cutting anymore. Four one thousandths of an inch is a very small measurement. And this can hit that pretty accurately. Okay. So now let's check our results. I have a shim of wood set up on my caliper, dial caliper. And so the butt of the reed goes there. That way I get a consistent measurement every time. And I'm trying to, trying to hit that four one thousandths of an inch mark. Now that we've finished profiling our reeds, we're ready for the last step, and that's to trim them with a reed trimmer. I use the Van Doren reed trimmer. You can see when you slide the reed in, you have two stops on the side that engage the reed, and one at the back, so you slide the reed back. The back will move forward and back with this knob, and the two side will move side to side with that knob allowing you to center it and then move it 
to where you want to clip it. If I were to clip this reed here, engaging the backstop at the furthest setting, I would be hitting the reed tip exactly where that shim of wood measured at the, the tip after we were done profiling. I like to give myself a little bit more room. So to override that back stop, I created a little uh, wedge shim of wood that's the exact same height as that back stop. So it allows me to place the reed. It still engages the two side stops, but I override that back stop and I can go back just a little bit, which is about a hair, gives me one more trimming if I decide that I need to uh, trim it because of the playability. So what I do is I wet the tip of the reed. I find that it makes it easier to clip it, it gives it a cleaner clip. I place it just beyond overriding that back stop and make sure that it's centered. And then I'm ready to clip. And there we have a finished reed. Here at the end of stage three, we now have five reeds that are ready to be played. In the next video, I'll show you how I initially play them and then my break-in process. So I hope to see you then.